This is the story of a tragedy within a tragedy. Within days of the December 7, 1941 Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Washington ordered a hasty investigation that blamed the attack on just two men. These men were the Army and Navy commanders in Hawaii, General Walter Short and Admiral Husband Kimmel. Humiliated, ridiculed, and demoted, these two men shouldered the pain of an entire nation. But over seven decades, the real story has emerged. The truth has led military men, Pearl Harbor survivors, and even the United States Congress to fight for the restoration of Short and Kimmel's rank. This is the truth of Pearl Harbor. These are the facts of a real tragedy. This is the story of Admiral Kimmel. Answering Kimmel's claim that he had an impossibly wide area of the Pacific to watch for enemy attacks, in 1981, 1986, and 1988, historian Donald Goldstein claimed that Kimmel had ignored a vital report that identified the North and Northwest as the most dangerous sectors for an enemy approach to Hawaii. But this report, known as the Martin Bellinger Report, said nothing of the kind. Michael Gannon is Professor Emeritus at the University of Florida and author of Pearl Harbor Betrayed. Well, this seemed to be a devastating criticism of Admiral Kimmel. If he had a, such a clear warning in front of him that any attack would come from a specific sector, uh, he should have done everything he could to guard that sector. But two things must be said about that. First, Admiral Kimmel believed, and Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, his uh, replacement afterwards, similarly ag uh, agreed with this, uh, that any search worth its name must be 360 degrees in breadth. And as for the Martin Bellinger report, that was a report that was compiled and given to Admiral Kimmel on March 31, 1941 by uh, Major General Frederick Martin and Rear Admiral Patrick Bellinger. Martin commanded the U.S. Army Air Corps on the island and Patrick Bellinger was commander of all of the patrol aircraft. After I read that damning uh, statement in the um, book uh, by Gordon W. Prang and Donald M. Goldstein, I went to the library of the University of Florida and looked through the massive collection of documents that recount the Pearl Harbor hearings conducted from 1941 to 1945 in one form or another and uh, all of the uh, collected documents that were used by the various uh, hearing bodies uh, are in that collection. And I found the Martin Bellinger report in four different places in that collection. And I read the first account I, I discovered uh, avidly to, to find where this warning was given, and it was not there. There was nothing in the Martin Bellinger report about the northern uh, sector being the most dangerous sector. There was nothing about any sector being more dangerous than any other. Uh, the word north does not even appear in, in the document, nor does any numerical or nautical equivalent. These people, Prang and Goldstein, had lied. And so baldly that I wondered why it hadn't been picked up in the years intervening between 1986 and the year uh, 1999 when I... Uh, discovered this. It was uh, quite an extraordinary bit of misinformation that has, of course, led many people astray in understanding the whole Pearl Harbor story. In 2001, which was the 60th anniversary of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, I attended a conference in Honolulu uh, put on by the National Park Service, to which many historians of the Pearl Harbor attack uh, had been invited, one of them, Donald Goldstein. And when it came my time to speak, I confronted him with the document. One of, I, I went through all four of the documents uh, as they were uh, collected uh, in the hearings, volumes, and uh, they were all identical. So I held up a copy of the Martin Bellinger report, and I said, uh, Dr. Goldstein, there is nothing in this report that states that the northern sector or any other sector was more dangerous than any others. Why did you make the statement that you did in your book 
Pearl Harbor, the verdict of history. And he made no reply. He chuckled and laughed it off. And I said, it's only seven pages long. It wouldn't take you long to read it at all. I have it here for you to read. And he chuckled it off. And the audience, I must say, chuckled with him. And so I tried to make the point then, and I'm trying to make the point here once more, that Admiral Kimmel was never given such a warning, and he is not guilty as charged. Vice Admiral David Richardson, former commander of the 6th Fleet and deputy commander of the Pacific Fleet, went further, saying criticisms made against Admiral Kimmel by the Defense Department in their Dorn Report were made by civilians who obviously lacked tactical knowledge and military command experience. The Dorn Report lawyers believed that Admiral Kimmel could station his ships 500 miles out and keep them there for long periods of time. In this case, it would have been required for up to 10 days. They did not realize that Admiral Kimmel had nowhere near the logistical support capability that that effort would have retired. Cruisers had to be refueled every five days, destroyers every two days. Uh, Admiral Kimmel's logistical support capabilities were far, far, far below that required for even a three or four day, five day deployment such as that. Help right a wrong and 70 years of injustice. Urge the president to act now and restore the ranks of Admiral Kimmel and General Short.